Imagine being in a bar overhearing an argument between two guys calling each other morons and one of them says, I speak 12 languages and you barely speak one. Don't you call me stupid. And list 12 languages and one of them happens to be your native language. So you chime in like, really? You speak Swahili? And the dude answers in a very polite wording with perfect grammar and pretty good pronunciation. I don't actually speak Swahili, but please don't expose and embarrass me. And carries on arguing with the guy who has no idea what he just said. Medieval peasant staring at my phone. I understand this tweet just fine. Me and the Dorito? Medieval peasant crunching. It's all right. These things are going to look primitive to you, but you have to remember that we're not stupid. We have the same intelligence as you. We simply don't have the same cumulative knowledge that you do. So we apply our intelligence to what we have. Me, so yeah, this white powder is a chemical our scientists make that makes cake super, super fluffy and bread insanely fast and easy to make. Like, no rising time at all. Medieval peasant holding a box of Arm & Hammer. Glory be to God for his wonders in the world. And you can clean things with it too? Me, oh yeah, you can clean like everything with it. It's amazing. Medieval peasant scrubbing the living hell out of a cooking pot. Damn, the future's pretty nice. I'm so proud of you. I told the hibachi guy to make me regret being born when he asked how spicy I wanted my spicy chicken, and he just nodded solemnly. I'll see you all in Valhalla. I'm seeing dead prophets. They weren't lying. That chicken can kill you. It tastes really good though. My compliments to the chef. The real problem with books turned movies isn't, oh my god, they didn't include every single word in the book. It's, oh my god, they completely overlooked the main theme, threw out any significant allegories, took away all the emotional pull, and turned it into a boring action movie with a love triangle in it. Evil game design must never be done for money reasons. Evil game design must be done for the love of evil itself. Today I learned of the Tiffany problem. Tiffany is a medieval name, short for Theophania, from the 12th century. Authors can't use it in historical or fantasy fiction, however, because the name looks too modern. This is an example of how reality is sometimes too unrealistic. Authors can't use it in fantasy fiction, eh? We'll see about that. Terry Pratchett, probably. Try to implement anything but a conservative 6th grade education level of medieval or Victorian times and you will butt into this all the time. There was literally a fad in the 1890s for nipple rings for all genders, and no, it was not under the mistaken belief that it would help breastfeeding. There's lots of doctors writing at the time telling people to stop, and that they thought it would ruin the breast's ability to breastfeed well, etc. It was straight up because the Victorians were freaks, okay? Imagine trying to make a Victorian character with nipple rings. Imagine the accusations of gross historical inaccuracy. One Appalachian phrase that essentially doxes you is yins. It's specific to like three counties in Pennsylvania, of course there is drift, I hear it across the Ohio border, but 9 out of 10 times when you hear it, they're from that super small area. I was living in Washington talking to a colleague I'd known for several months who never said where he was from and had a super neutral accent, but one day he said yins and I turned to him like an activated sleeper agent and said Pittsburgh, and he looked genuinely afraid. One time in Alaska we were discussing first languages and our new coworker had the same accent as me and then he said his first language was German and there's only one way you sound like me but spoke German before English, so I was like, ex Amish, and he was like, uh. Also, if you regularly work with kids slash teens, I cannot stress how important it is that you know someone who's like really into lame emo junk. There was a girl my dad was working with who just flat out refused to talk to adults or anyone at all, and one day I was there. And I saw her wearing a homemade bracelet that had beads on it that said Y-L-D-N-D-A-H-F-H-H-A-C-Y-C-S-Y-C-D-A-Y-D-K-K And since I was also once a 14 year old making niche homemade MCR merch, I was like, Oh my god, you like D&D, Audrey Hepburn, Fangoria, Harry Houdini, and Croquet? You can't swim, you can't dance, and you don't know karate? And she looked at me like I'd said literal magic words and now we talk about music all the time. If you're working with troubled kids, you need several people trained in child psychology with godlike levels of patience and at least one person who knows Five Nights at Freddy's lore front to back. Boomers, when life hands you lemons, make lemonade. Gen X, when life hands you lemons, create a startup to market lemon juice as a healthy, low carb alternative to lemonade. Millennials, <laughs> as if life would ever just hand you lemons. Gen Z, Blurry stock photo of lemons with the caption, lemon. 
Here, have this. Yup. Lemon! Lemon! I laughed so hard at this. Adding TikTok Mary Poppins cosplayer respond to allegations that he was wearing a third Reich medal in his latest fit by coming out as the reincarnation of Adolf Hitler, complete with past life memories, before his entire social media presence was nuked, with the sole exception of their egg-laying kink Spotify playlists to the Internet Sentences Treasure Vault. Amid all the societal decay, we still got it, boys. Can you repeat that, but instead of repeating it, say something completely different? Thank you! Masks and helmets that hide someone's face in such a way that they become the face themselves? My beloved. These are all creatures to me. You are kidnapped by the villain regularly, but you're starting to look forward to it. You know they won't hurt you, and are simply being dramatic. It also doesn't help that you are the only person they ever kidnap. This time, the hero doesn't bother trying to save you. Hey girly pop, this is literally the plot of Megamind. You know, conversations about World War II would be a lot more bearable and constructive if white men found that period rightly horrific rather than pornographic. We glorify war because it's the only time we're allowed to release the beast and not go to jail for it. You want to see who a man truly is? Put him in a battle. Man is never more himself than when he has nothing to lose. You're not fucking Odysseus. Go to therapy. People who prefer hot weather. Snow and ice are a pain and the cold is just kind of uncomfortable even when you wrap up, you know? People who prefer cold weather. My skin literally melts off every summer. I am a- I love censorship. Human soup as we speak. You wouldn't believe how many people reblog this to whine about hot weather in the tags. Too cold? Put on another layer. Too hot? Change into thinner clothes. Still too cold? Put on another layer. Still too hot? Uh, get naked, I guess? Still too cold? Put on another layer. Still too hot? Take off your skin. The cold is easily shut out. The heat is inescapable. I love censorship. The truth comes out. Avoidance techniques for the cold. More coats, fire, hot food and drink. Stay inside, fuzzy sweaters, earmuffs, become a burrito. Avoidance techniques for heat. Die, I guess. The thing about adulthood is when someone says something extremely rude to you, you can either turn the other cheek or calmly and firmly correct them. The third option is to tell them, say that again, I'll bite you. And everyone sort of nervously laughs and tries to move on from your little joke. Which is why I think it's very important that when they do say it again, you follow through. Nobody actually expects you to bite them. We should be biting more. Also, if you're with the county health department, do not read this post. I'm not sure I trust your motives, Tumblr user vampire apologist. Don't get me wrong. I 100% agree with the substance of your post. I just don't trust your motives. Hmm, I see. Lunges at you. So I'm a lifelong atheist and I've never actually read the Bible, but this guy sure seems like he has ADHD. You're telling me, he hyper-focused so hard he created the whole world in six days, then got kinda tired of it and didn't really do anything until the project started going wrong, at which point he tried in frustration to flood the whole thing so we could start over? With the Lord a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like a day. Bestie, it is time to get tested. I unironically love the theological hot takes on this site. In class, talking about tropes and plausibility, an undergrad blew us all away with a casual, it's unreasonable to assume a character knows what genre they're in. I ran an Aliens RPG years back, but the players didn't know it was an Aliens game until halfway through the first session. They thought it was a sci-fi game, but they also thought the monsters were going to be zombies. Over a period of two hours, they then proceeded to make every Aliens movie cliche mistake known to man, because at the time they all made sense. The characters in a story don't know they're in a story or what kind of story it is. They might think they're in a rom-com instead of a slasher movie. And if you're not in a slasher movie, why the great googly moogly would you search through every closet in your house just because a cup mysteriously fell off a table in the dining room? When I was a teenager and still on Neopets, I was part of a pretty big Star Trek guild and eventually became part of its council with the solemn duty of creating weekly polls. Well, one day I created the poll, which would win in a fight, Borg Cube or Death Star? Naturally, since this was a Star Trek guild, the answer was overwhelmingly Borg Cube, but someone did have the rationality to point out we were biased. So I look up a pretty prominent Star Wars guild and message one of their council and ask them to pull the same question, and get back to me in a week. They do, and naturally the freaking geek said, Death Star. So then I look up a Stargate guild and message the lead council member, saying the same thing, and then get back to me almost immediately, saying that the Death Star would immediately one-shot a Borg Cube, but they would never be able to do it again to another cube. 
and I took that wisdom back to my guild, and we were mollified. And for one moment, the nerd world was peaceful. Your partner is allowed to have meaningful relationships with other people. Your partner is allowed to get things from those relationships they don't get from you. Demanding you being the only source of pleasure and support in their life is possessive and toxic. Even if you're monogamous, this is not just for polyamorous people. Your partner is allowed to have fulfilling friendships outside of you. Your partner is allowed to turn to other people to help meet their needs. Demanding that they only come to you is unrealistic, toxic, possessive, and an unhealthy dynamic. The narrative that your partner should get everything from you and you get everything from them is a harmful product of bad rom-coms. Don't fall for it. Thinking about that time in one of my art classes when the prof put up a silhouette of L from Death Note and said, this is not an effective design because you can't tell who this character is from this shape. And everyone in the class went like, yes, we can, that's L from Death Note. If you wake up much earlier than normal, you feel secret emotions. One time I just woke up at 7 a.m. and stared at the sunrise for like an hour. Don't know what emotions those were, but they sure were a lot. If you stay up late enough, you feel those same emotions, but the bad version of them. The spread of COVID-19 is based on two factors. One, how dense the population is. Two, how dense the population is. Got to love language. I don't think we're rickrolling each other enough anymore. One, it cannot die out. Two, this undersaturated market is perfect for unsuspecting victims who've been lulled into a false sense of security. Be the person you hate. Bring back the dastardly link. Someone actually studied the falling Rickroll rate for their PhD dissertation recently and published the paper. Okay, but this made me wonder if there was actually any academic literature on Rickrolling, and yes there is! This is a paper about Rickrolling within academic literature, as in studies that attempt to Rickroll the people reading them. Best part is, no one is going to believe me and click that link even though it's 100% true. My friend's book is mentioned in this paper. There is no earthy way of convincing anyone that the Rickroll study link is real. But for what it's worth, it is. The based on a true story type of horror is funny because their heroes are always grifters in real life or at best credulous, but the movies have to present them as way more skeptical than they are. And of course, right about everything. The Conjuring, obviously, but also the Pope's exorcist having a scene where Russell Crowe's character assures us he rules out possession in 98% of cases and always examines every case thoroughly. Then you look up the real guy, and every interview he gave he'd claim tens of thousands more exorcisms than the last one, until at one point, the number jumped up by 90,000 in the space of three years, and that he attributed the increase in demons to yoga. My all-time favorite based on a true story is the guy who was like, there is a secret martial arts competition every year where the best gather from all over the world, and I won it, and there is not, and he most definitely did not. Bloodsport, starring Jean-Claude Van Damme. I'm like if a control freak couldn't control things. The fact that OP turned off reblogs is very, very funny to me. Anyway, I want this post on my blog too. Colon forward slash. I want a true horror movie where all the characters are intelligent and do all the right things and take all the proper precautions but still wind up getting killed by the antagonist. Nothing is scarier than doing everything you can in vain and staring in the face of futility. Plus, I would like not to yell at the characters for being dumb for once. Peak half, I love censorship, inclusivity that speaks to reality. Good on Lego for making a physically disabled Lego dude. Absolutely incredible accidental commentary by making him not fit in any of the buildings. I learned that there was an early 1900s act named Sober Sue, whose draw was she never smiled. A theater offered $1,000 to anyone who could make her laugh, attracting big comedians. Crowds came out to watch them try and fail, giving them a free show. Later it came out that Sue suffered from facial paralysis. Finessed. Boss texted me, I appreciate you staying out of the drama in the office. I literally have no idea what she's talking about. Then you're doing a fantastic job at it. The radio channel I listen to has a guy who does the traffic report every morning, and he got so fed up of saying basically, there's no traffic because everyone's at home, that he started getting listeners to message him with the traffic that's in their home. Like, in Steve's house in Surrey today, there's a massive delay between the bedroom and the dining room table, that is where Steve is working, because the dog is lying in the doorway. The current recommended diversion is via the kitchen for a cup of tea. That's adorable and very funny, and oh god, we're all going insane. 
The whole, I used to be a teen who hated authority only to grow up to become the authority that hates teens is a bad, bad thing that practically every other generation has fallen into and we all need to make an extremely conscious effort not to repeat the, I love censorship, pattern. Studies have shown that the shift starts to happen around age 30. If you're close to that, make a conscious effort to be open to and accepting of the younger people. I'm 31 and paying close attention to how I react to young people and new trends and I love censorship and trying to keep myself from developing those thought patterns. Noted. I started seeing recommended videos in my YouTube feed like top 10 cringy gen alpha moments. Miss me with that, I love censorship. I hope I stay on the side of the kids for as long as I'm alive, even if I don't understand them sometimes. Instead of till death do us part, how about for as long as this feels healthy, safe, and meaningful for both of us? Crazy that in the 1800s, platonic friends used to write letters to each other like, how I long to feel your warmth by my side and kiss your darling cheeks, and now everybody wants to talk to the person they're going to marry like they're doing a parent-teacher conference. This is so real. Sorry, therapy ruined some people. A lot of bad takes in the notes, but personally, I don't think that talking like the original tweeter does sound more sincere. I just think that people have gotten more adept at using legalese in a social context to cover all their bases so they can say, well, I didn't say anything that wasn't true. I think that a combination of feeling like you need to be morally justifiable at all times and an inability to understand language politically is what leads to the idea that language has to always unambiguously reflect reality in a literal way and therefore talking like every social interaction is a meeting with your boss. If there's such a thing as political correctness that has had negative consequences, this is probably one of the biggest negative consequences. Something that's oddly disturbing in retrospect is how when faced with the golden age of trolley problem memes, the central premise was such a subject of ridicule that the moral logistics of the problem were never addressed. Instead, discussions devolved into increasingly outlandish third options like killing the trolley conductor or blocking the tracks with your enormous I love censorship. Like, at its core, the problem always stated that the death was unavoidable. The question was never, how do you prevent this? Because preventing it was never an option. The train is coming. There's only a split second to decide. Your only choices are to allow a greater evil or to commit a lesser one yourself. In failing to engage the problem, the answer was never learned. The onus of responsibility was never what mattered, only the preservation of human life. Tumblr talks a big talk when it comes to harm reduction, but when faced with culpability, purity always carried more weight. The only accepted solution was an outlandish third option, not because it would save a life, but because it let you imagine a world where you could save all of them. In doing that though, you still got blood on your hands. You killed a man through an action, and that's a stain that doesn't wash off. I don't know how to explain to the people in the comments that letting a person die through an action is a bad thing. This is Korean. This is Japanese. This is Chinese. They're different. It all looks the same to me. I think that one of the most terrifying things that could happen in a dystopian setting, at least the newer ones, is to go through all the efforts in raising a resistance against the government, only for it to deploy the nuclear bombs on you and your rebel friends. I mean, it is a dystopia after all. You think no one else ever tried to rise up against the system? What made you think that the man in charge wouldn't have a problem blowing its own population? The Pronoun Cinematic Universe. Nods. I hear you. One of the things about linear time, why is my teacher role-playing with me in a formal email? Pulls you closer. You're failing trigonometry. Because millennials are now adults with teaching jobs, and we don't consider the stage direction and asterisk thing to be specific to role-playing. It's just a way of inserting body language into online written communication. Freaking that. Woman in a Victorian novel develops a fever from worrying too much. Me, shivering and sweating with stress-induced anxiety. WTF? That's so unrealistic, lol. Ben 10 is actually the most realistic series centering around a child who suddenly gains superpowers because he just uses them for stupid, petty, mundane stuff. Uses my messed up alien eldritch ghost powers to steal a golf cart. Kitten keeps walking across the keyboard. I think it's time to let her speak her truth. Six, editor's note. She manages to unpause and then repause Spotify at this point before sitting down completely still for a stretch of several seconds. Ed note. She leaves the chew on my mouse before returning midway through my typing the previous note. Min of the kitten. The little beast in question. This post just suddenly got a surge of notes for reasons I cannot discern, so here is a compilation of Minna being an absolute cartoon creature for your enjoyment. This image spoke to me. When the Dragon Age concludes, the next century will be called the A Suspicious Lack of Dragon's Age. This was one of the best plays of the night. 
I love when fic writers who've clearly never tried any kind of alcohol in their lives try to write someone drinking because they're always like, he ordered a tall glass of hard liquor. After three large glasses, he was feeling tipsy. Like, baby girl, I can't be sure, but I think you just sent this man to the hospital. The amber liquid tasted sweet. Bestie, I can assure you it did not. He drank the large glass of cheap whiskey in a single shot. No, he did not. Explaining kitchen appliances to my pet medieval knights, the microwave, or Michael the Wavius, and Metal Fork, or Sir Silverprong, are sworn enemies and can never cross paths lest their meetings spell destruction for all. It's still kind of wild how Phineas and Ferb managed to completely hijack an idiom. Now whenever someone hears a sentence leading with, if I had a nickel for every time, odds are their brain autofills with, I'd have two nickels, which isn't a lot, but it's weird that it happened twice, rather than I'd be rich, or I could action that requires purchasing something requiring an obscene amount of money, you know, what the idiom originally was. The thing is, the Phineas and Ferb version is just so much funnier and more actually applicable. Original idiom is anything that happens a lot. Phineas and Ferb version is weirdly specific thing that happens more times than would really make sense. Did you guys really use my son as your personal therapist for his entire adolescence without telling me just because his mom happened to be a person of importance in your lives? You gave him a messiah complex. Cheers to my housemates for drawing the gems for me for this comic. The shrug emoji has only been actually typed once by a single person. Everyone else who has ever used it has just googled shrug emoji and copy pasted it. Why repaint the Mona Lisa? Adults keep saying we owe it to the young people to give them hope. But I don't want your hope. I don't want you to be hopeful. I want you to panic. I want you to feel the fear I feel every day. And then I want you to act. I don't want you to be hopeful. I want you to feel fear. This girl is 43 levels of metal. Oh no, I hadn't noticed that my cat's automatic feeder was getting low on food. So as usual, she dashed off when she heard the machine start, but I couldn't hear the usual sound of her food falling into the bowl. So I went to look and my poor cat was just sitting there staring at her empty food bowl. Then for a second, she glanced up at me, then right back to her bowl with the biggest, saddest, most bewildered eyes you could ever imagine on such a small creature. I filled her bowl and the machine right away, of course, but I still feel a little guilty. Quick artist rendition. Me. Did you know that medieval cathedrals weren't actually supposed to be dark and rundown places with only stained glass as color? They were bright places full of light. The reason they look like that now is because of the centuries of accumulated grime and dust. Here, look at this restoration of the Cathedral of Chartres in France. It's based on actual paint from the times, and when you think about it, it makes a lot more sense. After all, a church is supposed to be a bright place of hope, yet when we think about the Middle Ages, we think about grimy and dark cathedrals. I wonder how much of our conception of history is shaped by our current visions of historical buildings. Huh, churches are a good metaphor for the church. Who would've thunk? You guys know that famous YouTuber? The one who plays the games? I think his name is, uh... Delete this. Texas Confession? I've never seen snow in real life. I posted this and it snowed like two inches a week later for the first time in like 35 years. WTF? Texas Confession? I've never had a million dollars. So we've tried explaining vaccines using science and that scared people. But what if, instead, we told them that vaccines actually contain magic rocks or healing energy. We left this rabies vaccine in the light of a full moon to cleanse it, so it's safe. Everyone knows about the link between rabies and full moons, smiley face. Vaccination is an ancient practice going back at least hundreds of years that draws on your body's natural healing abilities to let you fight disease naturally. You can literally make anything and anyone problematic if you try hard enough. Seriously, give me people and things and I'll make them all problematic right now. Dogs. I don't even have to do this one because PETA did it first by insinuating domestication is inherently abusive. The sky. Use the trick and mock anyone who asks what's up. A bullying tactic. Super Mario Bros. Stereotypes Italians, enforces the narrative of women who need men to rescue them, and encourages violence against turtles. John Mulaney. He was over on the bench and he saw what they did to Tyler and he did nothing. Oh my freaking god. Pokemon. Making your pets fight repeatedly is animal abuse. OP. OP literally argued that dogs were problematic, but go off, I guess. This is a work of art and should be sent to everyone as soon as they sign up for Tumblr so they know what they're walking into. 
This art is appropriative of the native cultural practices of Tumblrinas. You might argue the person doing the art is in fact a Tumblrina and it's their own culture, but it's a distinctive characteristic of Tumblrina culture that no one cares about your flippin' nuance. When I was little, I loved the taste of Blue's Clues Kids Toothpaste. I just straight up eat it. My mom thought this was unhealthy and would take away the toothpaste if she caught me eating it, or threaten to switch to grown-up mint toothpaste. Not as tasty. I would crouch behind the open bathroom door, slowly squeezing out Blue's Clues kids' toothpaste onto my hands and eating it as quietly as possible. Where's my damn kid? This gave me such a beautiful visual, I had to draw it. The true human experience of eating a little goopy in the dark. Whoville celebrating Christmas means there was a Who Jesus, and I can't stop imagining what kind of insane, susical contraption they would have had to crucify people. The Whocifixion. You can't just keep this in the tags. If you heard of writer's block, get ready for reader's block. You want to read. You have time. You know what to read. How? Have a pile of books ready to be read. You cannot sit still and focus enough to do so, or you can't even open the book. There is a parallel universe where Tumblr is actually a great functioning site. It's exactly as shitty, but every other social media site is worse by comparison. Rosalind is your love's name? Yes, just. I do not like her name. Okay, Jacques, why is this so funny? There was no thought of pleasing you when she was christened. It's tragic because I didn't include Orlando's response. It's even funnier. Get him, Orlando. You tell him. I'm glad Jeff the Killer has turned into just a silly internet guy nowadays, but god, I wish people utilized the fact that his original mythos had him as a shitty 13 year old more. The Jeff the Killer jokes are funny as is, but even funnier if you imagine him as a shitty edgelord preteen that barely comes up to your chest. Sorry to all his fans, but Jeffrey is grounded from Jeff the Killing You until he finishes his social studies homework. It's actually very simple. All cartoon characters have Schrodinger's junk. They exist in a quantum superposition of smooth like a Barbie doll and hung like a horse. And when you collapse the waveform, it resolves to whichever option makes the joke land. The first early hominid to make use of metaphor or allegory must have blown the others away. Your actions will have consequences. Just like a tree has fruit. Whoa, holy shit guys, did you catch that? One hominid is so impressed that he goes back home and is like, this cave feels so peaceful tonight just like a tree has fruit, and everyone makes fun of him. Grug's brain is full of stupidity, just like a tree is full of fruit. Whole tribe going completely apeshit at first ever comedian. Chekhov's cat. If you see a cat in the first act, it will probably be relevant later. Example, alien. Schrodinger's razor. An unopened box may or may not contain the solution to the story. There's no way to know without opening it. Example, monk. Occam's gun. The simplest way to kill off a character is to shoot them. Example, Bambi. I have been cracking up at this for the past three minutes. Chekhov's box. If there is a container introduced in the opening act, it will be opened later. Schrodinger's gun. Treat every gun as if it's loaded unless you've checked it yourself. Occam's cat. If you hear strange noises at night, it's probably a cat. It is an unspoken rule that if a little kid is hiding under a blanket or couch cushions, you are required to comment on how lumpy the blanket is and pretend to sit on it to try and smooth it out. Also, if you're playing hide and seek with them, it is critical that you search every other possible and impossible hiding spot, all the while wondering out loud how they managed to disappear just like magic before walking right past their hiding spot. And if a baby starts playing peekaboo, you are required to act surprised when they show their face again. If a kid hands you a phone, you answer it. If a kid shoots you with a nerf gun, you are supposed to die a dramatic death and explain, Ugh, you shot me, wah! When you push a kid on the swings, you gotta do the whoosh! I literally just blocked about a dozen people on this post for being cranky about children. Being a joyless shit beast to kids isn't cool, they're kids. If you want to be Oscar the Grouch, that's fine, but do it in a way they understand and explain it to them. I don't want to play, I'm grumpy. Thank you though, that was kind. It's literally not hard. Kids are small people, treat them with common fucking decency. Do I date tall people, just so they can always see me from my best angle, or is that just a bonus for them? I don't know, how tall are you? Cause that'll tell you why you date tall people. I'm 5'2". You date tall people cause everyone is taller than you. Standing next to sunflowers always makes me feel weak, like, look at this fucking flower, this flower is taller than I am, 
This flower is winning and I'm losing. Wow, you are not ready to hear about trees. A kid at my school has a panini maker, so he sells paninis to other students and everyone called him Dan the Panini Man. But the campus police people shut him down because it's not legal to sell food if it's not a bake sale or whatever. So now he's Dan the Paper Towel Man and he sells paper towels. But with each paper towel purchase, you get a free panini. I think we all have that one piece of media we like that's basically, I love this thing, but I don't think everyone should watch this thing and would not categorically recommend it to other people I know. This thing has a lot of problems, and I am the first person you should ask if you want to know a long list of criticisms, but I really enjoy this thing. It's like holding up a can of trash to everyone else and saying, you are a reasonable person and you would not enjoy touching this garbage, and I value that about you, and then pouring it out on the ground and rolling around in it yourself. I always felt like one of my superpowers was that I'm not easily marketed to, but it turns out it might be I am broke. Hmm. For one dollar, we'll add 75 bees. Are you sure? Stop making shows about Americans in Europe. Try a Europeans in America instead. The outrage of not knowing exactly what something costs at a store. No public transport. Everyone's smiling in your face and waiters scaring you by constantly popping up at your table. Ice in your water for some reason. The kind of culture clash I want to see. I love censorship. Emily in Paris, I want Francois in Texas. A second person just beat Tetris. Humans are born wanderers. Don't tell me you don't want to veer sharp left off this trail and get lost for 30 days. I, I love censorship, know you do, deep down. You love it. You know, it's a real shame that Romans didn't have access to Australia, specifically for augury reasons. I really wish I could have seen a Roman auger have to deal with Australian birds. Like imagine trying to properly interpret an omen from a, I love censorship, cassowary. Loving that the general consensus here is that the omen when you see a cassowary is that you are about to die of cassowary. The cassowary evaluates your innards, not the other way around. Critically, I love censorship, to this problematic fic in a scholarly manner. Making discerning noises of disapproval, possibly moans, but who's to say? The only correct and good way to consume problematic media. You can probably tell which family member is coming upstairs by their step pattern, but wouldn't be able to pick out your own. If my own footsteps were coming down the hall towards me, I reckon I would have bigger problems on my hands. Bartender. Thanks for stopping that bar fight, Spider-Man. Can I get you a drink? It's on the house. Peter. Thank you, but I can't. Bartender. Why not? Peter, try not to give his age away. I'm pregnant. Then he promptly backflips out the window. Black Mirror episode. Twitch chat watches you in your real life. Me, trips down the stairs, Twitch chat. What is the biggest lesson that employment has taught you? Efficient workers got punished with more work. Loyal workers get punished with no raises. Workers who care about improving the company get fired. The higher the title, the easier the workday, and the higher the pay. HR only exists to avoid lawsuits and will always, always rat you out. If you're really, truly, genuinely passionate about your work, you'll get paid less because you think it's a privilege just being there. This was the first frame from an Apple Vision Pro review that made me believe we're all going to be using and leaning into spatial computing soon enough. It always comes back to timers. For $3,500, you can get Shinigami eyes for pasta. We're all going to be using and leaning into spatial computing. This is a telltale sign of rich tech bro brain rot. Oh, let's reinvent the kitchen timer, but worse and connect it to Wi-Fi. I love censorship, idiot. This is even worse because I just realized that you'd literally be wearing a 3500 VR headset while you're I love censorship cooking. This I love censorship would be stupid even if it cost $35. Briefly forgot Death Note was a thing and was wondering why I need to spend 3500 to know if my pasta was transphobic. This is your last warning. The next time you vandalize Wikipedia, you will be shot. We will change your auxiliary verbs from is to was. Poor old Granny Scorpion shoes. No one ever saw her death coming. It was pneumonia. Yes, her pet scorpion pneumonia, who lived in her shoe. Tragic. You shot her point blank. This reads like a Monty Python sketch. One of my favorite tropes is a character with a nasty, toxic personality who tries very hard to do the right thing anyway. 
I like my protagonists sad, tired, bitter, fully convinced they will never get the recognition they deserve, but they still gotta get up in the morning and be a good person. You were in customer service, weren't you, OP? I owe Amazon. Writer says she's losing money thanks to TikTok book return hack. If you want free books, go to the flabbergasting library. Guys, stop being crap to creators. You aren't hurting Amazon. You're stealing from writers. This is an extremely frustrating trend to watch happen. Indie writers already work so hard and there's nothing they can do. Amazon doesn't give a damn. They profit either way. Please download Libby if you want access to free ebooks that were legitimately purchased by a library. Hurting people like this means they can't afford to write books. Certified Fiddlestick Amazon Post. Actually, this is my new favorite Does the Dog Die comment. Does the dog die? Yes, and it's terrible. But John Wick spends the rest of the movie deliberately, gloriously, and violently avenging the dog. So it feels really pro dog overall. This is mine. It's on turning red. Is there gun violence? Can you imagine? This comment on a Transformers comic page has always killed me. Is someone hit by a car? Like, half of them are cars, and they are constantly hitting each other. Drop the idea that you need some deep philosophical meaning behind your tattoo. If you got a tattoo simply because it's aesthetically pleasing and for no other reason, then good for you. Aestheticism is the theory of art for art's sake, and was championed by Oscar Wilde with the belief that surrounding oneself with beautiful things can directly influence the person one becomes. I'm taking a class on it. So basically, every time you get a cool tattoo, or a brooch you find in an antique store, or a pretty wall print just because you like it, Oscar Wilde is nodding approvingly. My sole mission in life is to make Oscar Wilde's ghost approve of me. My new hobby is making fake alcoholic drinks out of Jello. Hands you a glass of wine, but I tip it over to prove it won't spill like a Dairy Queen employee with a blizzard. You tell your cowgirl girlfriend you want to bring toys into the bedroom, and she brings out a handsaw, a vaguely rake-like implement, and two semi-steroidal objects with handles. Only on Tumblr will you encounter a joke with, Okay, so imagine you're having coitus with one of the cows from that Gary Larson comic as the setup. Liberal fighting games. Gaze blue. Street friender. The queen of fighters. Grimble fantasy versus heteronormativity. Tekken back the means of production. Soul caliber. Guilty gear. Fatal Furry, they them's fighting herds. Tony Hawk Pronoun Skater 2, Overwatch. You forgot the greatest Baldur's Gate 3, your royal gayness. Minecraft Fair, Medal of Homo Allied Assault. Where is Bayonetta? Team Fortress? I'm not sure if some of you know what a fighting game is. Foles Pre-Show Warm-Up. This song is called Seabat and it's by Hudson Mohawk and there's no better warm-up track on earth. The innocence of this 13-year-old video. Me, has absolutely no idea what size an acre is in real people language. 1% the size of the wood where Winnie the Pooh lives. <laughs> Next question. I remember when I was little, I asked my grandma and she said, about the size of a parking lot. And I just accepted that until about five years ago when I remembered this and was like, wait, parking lots come in different sizes. That old bag really didn't know either. Imagine my shock as a neurodivergent teen when I first realized that using large vocabulary and eloquent speech doesn't make you less likely to be misinterpreted. Rather, it adds an entirely new layer of misinterpretation I had never even realized existed in the form of people thinking you're being snobbish or condescending when you're just trying to be specific. I was reading a book about interjections, oddly enough, yesterday which include the phrase, in these days of political correctness, talking about no longer making jokes that denigrated people for their culture or for the color of their skin. And I thought, that's not actually anything to do with political correctness. That's just treating other people with respect. Which made me oddly happy. I started imagining a world in which we replaced the phrase politically correct wherever we could with treating other people with respect. And it made me smile. You should try it. It's peculiarly enlightening. I know what you're thinking now. You're thinking, oh my god, that's treating other people with respect gone mad. Happy Valentine's Day. 11 years old? Still true. Is anyone else tired of superhero deconstructions lately? Like, don't get me wrong, I will agree that heroics like Marvel are oversaturated, but so are their deconstructions. Literally all they do is take an archetype of a superhero and make him an unbearable pee-pee-poo-poo head who kills people. 
Sometimes they may have the mentality of a child, as seen in Homelander. Other times, they're just vicious rapscallions who kill people and call anyone who has an ounce of idealism and empathy to be juvenile or a weakling. It grinds my gears because idealists and empathetic people do exist in real life, more common than we give them credit for. So the idea that all humans will let power corrupt them if they ever get it has become as oversaturated as the heroes they seem to deconstruct. The first simulated image of a black hole was calculated with an IBM 7040 computer using 1960 punch cards and hand plotted by French astrophysicist Jean-Pierre Luminet in 1978. My favorite video game quest trope is, help us, they are stealing our ancient artifact. Thank you for helping us. As a reward, you may have our ancient artifact. The ancient artifact was less important than having agency in its distribution. Nothing is more important than keeping it out of the hands of the British Museum. This is my favorite thing ever. A boat wrote this. Peer reviewed and accepted. What do you call it when a Tumblr user posts something irritating on purpose to get lots of engagement? Lore, taunt, engagement cultivation, decoy, engagement tilling, tease, engagement geoponics, scrunch, something else, put in tags. You mean the freaking bait? Wait, you son of a your message, I'm gonna get ya, I'm gonna get ya, has been removed for violating Twitter's terms of service. Threats of violence. Every cat exists on a sliding scale of unit to goblin, with exotic long hairs and oriental short hairs both being on the extreme yet opposite ends of the spectrum. Reddit's tech help threads may heckle you for being an amateur, but at least they don't try to gaslight you like Adobe help threads. You think I'm joking, but I'm dead serious. It's normal for apps to use as much memory as they want, why is it a problem? Better to use it than leave it idle. You said memory went up to 95%. You also said it overheated and crashed. No connection that I can see between these things. It's normal for systems to work hard, get hot, and use the fan. Crashing isn't normal, so please describe this in detail. We may be able to help you if you will stop insisting there is a memory problem and work with us on the real problem. If you've already made your mind up, we can't offer any help. Adobe programs cannot crash or overheat your computer. That is not possible for any application program. It is one of the tasks of the operating system to supervise programs and the hardware and to make the necessary tweaks. This almost always points to a faulty system. I feel like there's two levels of chronically online. There's like the variety where you recognize obscure memes and stupid drama and post constantly, but have some sort of tether to reality and have friends in the real world and read the news from time to time. And then there's the kind where you genuinely don't realize that your political position or feelings about popular media are not just non-mainstream, but actively fringe, and that it's not emotional labor to pick people up from the airport. I'm a bad person who thinks bad thoughts like, ew, what is that girl wearing? And then remember that I'm supposed to be positive about all things, and then think, no, she can wear what she wants. Screw what other people say. Damn girl, you look fabulous. I'm just a teeny bit hypocritical, to be honest. I was always taught by my mother that the first thought that goes through your mind is what you have been conditioned to think. What you think next defines who you are. Read this, then read it again. Experienced several previously undiscovered emotions today because my conservative mom said being gay is a choice because she likes women too, but she simply chooses not to acknowledge it. Is someone who has been involved in union organizing through my dad's union since I was literally in second grade? The way that people on Tumblr think unions work drives me literally insane. Unions do so much more than just strike. Unions bargain. Unions sit in at meetings with upper management. Unions help people navigate benefits. Unions coordinate aid drives for disabled members. My union ran a donations campaign for me for the interim between the end of my allotted paid leave and my disability claim. Unionize your workplace means so much more than talk to your coworkers about striking. You gotta actively know what a union is and what a union isn't before you can form one. Calls in Unionize should lead to more people learning their rights and learning how unions work. And coordinating with orgs like SEIU and the Teamsters and the AFT, and if you don't know what those are, look them up. My union found me a legal expert to help me check over my last redundancy settlement for free, provided private medical cover whilst I was unemployed, and negotiated a good deal on cheap insurance for their members. It is so much more than strikes. Bill Nye the Science Guy was my science teacher. When he came into class, we'd all chant, Bill, 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 but also, science, science, science. Then one day, I went to class and Bill wasn't there, and it turned out he was fired. I found his apartment in a massive monolithic block, we had a heart-to-heart -heart chat. He broke down into tears saying, I really liked being your science guy. I really liked being your science guy sounds weirdly poetic to me. It just sounds beautiful, and I don't know why. 
I asked one of my male friends to stop using the phrase man up, and he's been using fortify for the past two weeks instead, and it's just a little thing, but honestly, it makes a difference. And to be honest, it's also pretty funny when I start to deflate in the library, and he leans over and goes, fortify! Dude, fortify is banging. That makes things like you're some kind of RPG character. Fortify is way better than man up. My body, please let me go to bed. My brain, I won't let you drop till you draw those crocodiles with human teeth. Lol, getting pulled into the office for an informal sit down because we just finished our round of paltry and frankly offensive raises and I've been calling them poverty wages slash disrespect wages because that's what they are. Yes, Miss Manager, my vibe is a little rancid right now but I have to spend all my break listening to my coworker who's going through a divorce cry in secret because she can't afford to live alone despite working a full 40 hours a week. So shrug emoji. You're riling everybody up and making a lot of negativity with your comments. Why? Because I told a lady who's been there 34 years to my six and a half since the day the store opened and who I can fully and freely admit works harder than I do that I make $4 more than her. Yeah, she should be riled up. Talking about wages is a right we should exercise every day. Bohemian Rhapsody, We Will Rock You, Somebody to Love. All hit singles, and all the direct product of a band that was formed when an astrophysicist and a dentistry major found a new friend in an art college, who then went on to recruit a fourth member from the electronics school. Based on this alliance, I propose the rift in society between arts and STEM students was fabricated to keep us separated, so as to dilute our true power, and fabricated by who, you may ask? The business major, the only member of society who reaps no reward from art and science and thus must weaken us so as to stay ahead. In this essay, I will- Young adult novel idea. In a world where everyone is born with a countdown with how many french fries they're allowed to eat before death, one young man, me, is born with an infinity symbol. He grows up thinking it's an eight, so he never eats any fries. He's teased and taunted by the high fry kids. Then he eats his first fry on his 18th birthday. His number doesn't change, but the rest of his world does. I still think one of the funniest experiences of my life was watching American Psycho with my sister and afterwards we both went, okay, let's do something more lighthearted now and put on the dub version of Hal's Moving Castle and we both lost our minds when we heard Hal start talking. What if you joined a random public discord server and there was a channel called, get a load of this guy and it was just screenshots of your posts and people were doing like complex analysis on them. A topic I have infinite interest in is game systems that have unintended complexities as a result of player interaction. I could read a billion articles about video games that screw up their fictional economies so bad they completely devalue their own currency. This one guy on YouTube made a five hour video about how the EVE Online devs basically had to invent a system of law in the game to deal with players exploiting various in-game systems. Like, they had to invent land tax regulations in a video game. And I have no interest in playing fighting games, but the insanely complicated meta of each fighting game makes me want to be a video game's anthropologist. One of my favorite modes of game interaction. Y'all claim Scene is back, but where is he? Dynanom. Little old Italian lady. Do you have zucchini? Me. Yes, right here. Lady. Is how much? Me. Two ninety nine a pound. Lady. It's usually one forty nine. Me. Yes, in the summer. Lady. Pauses, then grabs two. I put it in a soup. Me. Oh, nice. What kind are you making? Lady. You will not fantasize about my soup. And then she walked away. You will not fantasize about my soup will be in my head forever. I love you, little old Italian lady. I came up with a new saying. You wouldn't bake a cat just because it jumped into the oven. It means that just having a really, really good opportunity to do something awful is not an excuse to do it. That it isn't enough that you never go out of your way to do evil, you're also supposed to go out of your way to do the right thing. Even in situations where the wrong thing to do would be extremely easy and profitable, and passively allowing it to happen would be easier than going out of your way to do better than that. Capitalism runs on cat ovens. My dad just exploded into laughter out of nowhere and told me, imagine the Lion King, but with sea lions. He has been chuckling about it for five straight minutes now. Apparently it doesn't matter that I've told him 10 times it's the monkey who raises the newborn and not the lion himself. This is the scene he has been imagining. He can't raise his kid over his head. I want it. Okay, but have you considered? Ah yes, the three genders, girl, boy, and mischief. 
Big fan of marriages of convenience. Marry your best friend for tax benefits. Marry your roommate for college tuition breaks. Marry your love interest for plot contrived reasons at a fake wedding. Then accidentally fall in love and get married for real in the epilogue. So many possibilities. Get married to further the joke. Your commitment is not to each other, but rather to the bit. I love going viral on Tumblr.com. It's like if you stood in a field and said some of the stupidest shit a human being is capable of, and then like 50,000 crows attacked you. Don't do this to me. My brother in Christ, you made the post! Watching a Tumblr post I've seen on actual Tumblr appear on a YouTube compilation or on some other app always feels like how I imagine wildlife photographers must feel when they see an animal in the zoo they photographed in the wild. Can y'all stop reblogging this? I can see where this is headed and I don't want to be in a zoo. Posts that have 10k to me. Don't you do this to me. The zoo won't have enough enrichment for me. Notes are calming down and I'm yet to appear anywhere, to my knowledge. The wildlife containment people have missed me. Ha! I'm free! The way I cannot let this post die, it's personal. You monster! You'll bring them right to me! No one escapes the zoo. Face your destiny! I refuse. I will not be gawked at by YouTube tourists. I shall remain here, in my natural habitat, with plenty of enrichment. At it's a PM Seymour. Well, well, well. OP, I am so sorry. Damn it! Bastards put me in next to the otters! Inventing a new type of steel called stainful steel. All kinds of fucking colors and slops will stick to this bad boy. When you use a stainful steel knife, it's basically 90% meat juices by weight before it even touches the delicious ribeye steak. I expect to sell this idea for $100. Cast iron? Everyone, stop casting iron at me, I'm gonna run out of counter spells. Grabbing myself by the scruff of the neck and forcing myself to at least skim read a long form post or a piece of text that I just scrolled past despite thinking it sounded interesting because it's too long. I will not contribute to my own attention deficiency and limit my general knowledge and critical thinking skills by needing information spoon fed to me in bite sized pieces to be able to digest it. I will not. Germ is always standing in pics like a sporty blonde girl who just graduated nursing school. My roommate waking up at 5.30. Me going to bed at 5.30. I love how this could be either AM or PM and still make sense. Let's be real, in a time before the internet, people didn't have more adventures and make more meaningful connections. They watched TV and listened to CDs. Before that, they listened to records and read magazines. Before that, they listened to the radio and read bad dime novels. Before that, they embroidered or some shit. People have been staying inside and ignoring other people for as long as there have been buildings. I think we all needed this. My least rational fear is what if I end up being a pony in the My Little Pony universe and I get the most revealing cutie mark? Like what if my cutie mark is the bisexual flag and I have to cover it up with makeup for years and pretend to be a blank flank to not get outed to my conservative Pegasus father whose favorite newspaper is called The Right Wing? <laughs> Snuggles, get your head in the fellowshipping game! His favorite hobby is napping! I think they should make a fighting game where all the characters are from the public domain. What's this? It's the Great Gatsby with the steel chair! Hey, are you offended by the word bandersnatch? I'm gonna send you a hate on. But I saw that you go by she, her, and I respect women. Don't let anything stop you from being a hater, king. Sorry, this is my first time sending an anonymous hate message, so I'm a little nervous. Thanks for being supportive. Take your time. Website's hate mail game is perplexing. Stop. I need that pic of the boy who took his cat to prom and she has a little dress and is looking up at him with 100% love and tenderness. There she is! If every website I used to talk to my friends could stop eating dookie and going to hell, that would be great. Women are so hard to please these days. Personalized playlists? Handwritten love letters? Pizza and movie nights? Forehead kisses? Words of endearment? Late night walks and talks? Loyalty? Picnics? Watch the stars, sunrise, or sunset? Cook slash bake together? Flowers? Cuddles? We really aren't, I promise you. Maybe you just aren't willing to put forth the effort, take the time, or learn any of the million little ways to make us happy. Here's a hint. Most of the things that make us happy are things that make you happy too. Crazy, right? Why do people like a character who's committed war crimes but hate this other character just because they're annoying? Because it's fiction, Susan. And being annoying in fiction is a greater sin than being a supervillain. Because it won't make me want to read about them. It isn't difficult to understand. 
It is absurd to divide people into good and bad. People are either charming or tedious. Oscar Wilde. The war crimes are fictional, but my annoyance is real. I will say, one of the benefits of being a Sailor Moon fan is that Naoko Takeuchi is notoriously private. We go years without hearing anything from her, and we do, she's just like, glad you like Sailor Moon, thank you, and disappears again. That's nice. One time she turned up out of nowhere to be like, I think giving away free condoms to friend STDs is very important. And we were like, what, Naoko Takeuchi? But then she was already gone again. Kana had to have known that women weren't permitted to learn waterbending in the north when Katara said she was traveling to find a master. Therefore, it is my personal belief that Kana sent her 14-year-old granddaughter to kick Paku's behind. I do think there is a degree to which certain kinds of Instagram activists have convinced themselves that traumatizing themselves in solidarity is a useful form of activism. I'm having nightmares and crying so much, I want to be sick because of all these videos of dying children, but I can't look away while people are getting hurt. I mean, don't you think you'd be able to help more if you weren't having nightmares and crying all the time? Don't you think this is a one-way trip to burnout? Don't you think maybe increasing the amount of trauma going around is counterproductive? I don't know, bro. There's something to be said for bearing witness, but there comes a point where you gotta look hard at yourself and go, am I helping or am I just making myself suffer so I don't feel guilty for not suffering while somebody else is experiencing bad doo-doo? I'm in the woods placing cardboard cutouts of morels in the leaf litter to trick and bamboozle people. I'm about to ruin someone's whole life. Scamp. Hehehehe. <laughs> Gnome behavior. If Marx was real, what would his Tumblr URL be? If Marx was real? Ah yes, the eternal game of Kirby fan or deluded communist. Welcome to my new app, Uber Feats. I will send heroes to your house to commit great feats of strength and cunning. Will they do my dishes? They will slay your dishes. What about the laundry? They will slay your laundry. What about the Minotaur harassing my cows? They will have sex with the Minotaur. Fantasy video game locations include the ocean, the mushroom forest, the misty moors, the mystical machine land, and ancient Egypt. Sci-fi video game locations include the dilapidated city overrun with alien fungi, tentacle forest, OSHA violation building, spaceship corridor labyrinth, giant nest of alien eggs, desert planet with worms, and <laughs> ancient Egypt. Anytime I'm tempted to eat something that might be bad, I picture myself showing up in a chubby emu video. A lot of people, especially Americans, make fun of British cuisine and most of the time it's fair, but a lot of the time the food they're making fun of is poverty food or working class food. So really, the joke's on them, because our terrible, terrible peasant food is going to come in real handy with the current cost of living crisis. Poverty didn't force you to name your food Spotted Dick. Posts that be like, if I were a monster that had to eat people, I would just eat horrible people are so absurd to me. How often do you see known criminals on the street? Billionaires out for a nightly stroll around town? Effectively? Fucking never. If I have to drag myself to the grocery store, you think it's going to be any easier for me to hunt Bezos and co every time my stomach growls? I can't bother to plan meals more than a day in advance. How am I going to perform whole ass detective work to confirm someone's a serial killer before I eat them? Y'all got that much time on your hands? Planning five course meals every night of the week? Don't make me laugh. Eat a pedestrian and tragically wrestle with guilt like the rest of us, idiot. Dracula keeps his first two nails trimmed. That's so sexy of him. Undeniable mark of a man who loved his wife. 2023 Common Era poster, after sharing a self-referential meme. We're gonna confuse future archaeologists so bad. 4971 Common Era Archaeologist, on the dig site. Why do the bones have plastic in them? Jesus Christ, Jesus fucking Christ, it's in their bones. I don't want to do this anymore. I don't want to do this. I went to go pick up my hormones from the chemist today, and the guy was quite sweet and very well-intentioned, but clearly way out of his element. When I was leaving, I did the standard, thanks, have a nice night, and he responded with, you too, enjoy your, very, very quietly, obviously realizing what he was saying was highly insane, gender? And to be honest, I haven't stopped thinking about being a gender enjoyer since. I love when police departments have, like, a crime division. What are all the other divisions doing? The crimes? I love watching documentaries about amusement park accidents because all of the park officials are saying, Oh dear God, none of us could have anticipated that the roller coaster car would detach. This is a freak accident, an act of God. And then the narrator is like, The Dick Twister 9000 was a known safety hazard in Rabies Vector since its inception. 
It was designed by disgraced Cirque du Soleil clown John Roosters, who had never seen a math textbook. <sighs> Just discovered that iPhone users can't see italicized emojis. Can't see a fucking what now? Today I learned, the reason why we view Neanderthals as hunched over and degenerate is that the first skeleton to be found was arthritic. Way to I love censorship. It up for your whole species, you I love censorship. Idiot. I get so many asks in my inbox telling me that they are Zoroarchs that have been in disguise in human society for several years. Like, I literally do not believe you. If you are a shapeshifter illusionist, why would you pretend to be Hiker Barry from Route 214? I like being Hiker Barry from Route 214. It's uncomplicated. Trainer taglines before they blow you up with 15 gravelers. Just once, I want to put the blade of my sword under a pretty boy's chin and tilt their head up so I can see both fear and I love censorship in their eyes. Is that too much to ask? Which one of these shapes is Booba and which one is Kiki? The one on the left is more Booba and the one on the right is more Kiki. Thanks. New Turing test just dropped. My uni students asked me if they had homework for the holidays and I felt so bad for them and their tired, dead eyes that I told them to just mail me pics of their favorite Pokemons. Three students sent me Digimons. I can't, I love censorship, trust them with anything. I give up. Can you come out? Yeah, give me a minute. Mom, I'm gay. I know that, silly. Come out to the car. Car, I'm gay. If his dad joke game is that strong, he better adopt or all that natural talent will be wasted. I'm coming for your dad in more ways than one. Wrong blog, wrong blog, rock blog, fudge. I beg you, stop giving this notes. I miss the days when, no matter how slow your internet was, if you paused any video and let it buffer long enough, you could watch it uninterrupted. Do you think there's someone out there on this site who's completely non-LGBT, yet has all their identity written out in their bio in the format of someone with detailed micro-labels? Kyle, he slash him, heterosexual, heteromantic, cisgender man, monoamorous, football fan, Baseball enjoyers do not inquire. Kyle, in my mind, is here because his trans girlfriend made him get an account, and he's been earnestly trying his best to fit in. You pick up a small device. On its small screen, it simply says, one skill point remaining, and a list of eight attributes. You click on strength and instantly feel your muscles stiffen a little. The screen now says, level up to gain more skill points. Jump cut to me in a shady alley, armed with a tennis racket swinging at rats with wild abandon. Roman soldier. Halt, strange person. Where are you from? Time traveler. I come from the future. What are your names? Roman soldier. My name is Quintus, as I am the fifth child in my family. My comrade is Sextus, for he was the sixth child in his family. What is your name? Time traveler. My name's Liv. Roman soldier. Starts counting on his fingers as his eyes open in fear. Hang on, I need to Google something. Yeah, this is funny. To get the best Wattpad experience, tell us about yourself. Your response will be kept private. Pick one, you bald, genderless idiot. Free him. He's free. Yes. Yes. The Snorlax is out. There's nothing more representative of Doctor Who than the following two facts. Every single Dalek story plays the fact that the Daleks are involved as a reveal. Every single Dalek story has the word Dalek in the title. It's so unfortunate when different people's neurodivergent traits clash horribly. Like, yes, I totally understand that the man at the other table can't control his stimming and loud vocal tics, and I think he deserves to have a nice day out at a restaurant without judgment. However, if I don't remove myself from the audible vicinity in the next 20 seconds, I will explode. If I was Sisyphus, I'd eat a bit of dirt off the slope every time I'm way up until the slope is no longer steep enough for the boulder to roll down. It would be the end of suffering in 47 days. If I was Atlas, I'd shake the sky up and down to make the laminated wobble sound worldwide every day and tick Zeus off enough to kill me or himself. No idea how I'd cope being Prometheus. He died so we can light special grass. I wish him the best. Being in your early 20s is so borked. I really just sat there waiting to be an adult the whole time I was a teenager, and now I'm so severely feeling like a tall child. Mitski was right. Every day from ages 10 to 17, I'm going to have it together. Car, job, move out, flee the country the second it's legally possible. Nobody can stop me. I'm basically an adult already. Age 20. Google, how do I make my own doctor's appointment? We are everywhere. I wasn't recruited. I enlisted. Don't die wondering. I'm one. Old lesbian messaging was super vague and ominous. I love it. This feels like advertising of Invasion of the Body Snatchers. 
can we please talk about Thomas Jefferson's bed? Like, imagine him sliding across the bed and into his office. Impress them with your lovemaking, then impress them with your lawmaking. What the holy moly cannoli was wrong with Thomas Jefferson, honestly? If I was a vampire, in my bat form, I would simply curl up in your pocket. I would cut little slices of fruit occasionally throughout the day to slip in there for you to munch on. I appreciate you so much. In regard to sexual orientation, do you think of yourself as straight or heterosexual? I do not understand the question. Prefer to discuss with my doctor or practitioner. Prefer not to answer. More options. Ah yes, the sexualities. Straight, confused, I don't have to tell you. What are you, a cop? Buzz off. And more, trademark. The five stages of realizing you're not straight. S is for slug. I'm enamored by the specificity of this blog. Like, this is the only post they've ever made. This account was solely created for this special little guy. Does he know? That some people respond to any well-foreshadowed reveal with, Ugh, that plot twist is so predictable. Proves bad faith criticism has rotted their brains to the point they think it's bad writing if they can correctly identify information the writers were intentionally giving them. I'm opening Fifty Shades of Grey to a random page and posting what I find. Part 9. Christian Grey put his thumb in my mouth, and then the other one, and then two more. Wider, he said as he put in one more. I bet you've never had this many thumbs in your mouth. I hadn't. Where is he getting all of those thumbs? 